So when we think about work-life balance, maybe a good place to start is when you either challenges that you've encountered with that, or when you see your clients, what are big things that pop up for people when they're wrestling with this thing? Gosh. Um, well, the first thing that comes, well, okay. The very first thing that comes to mind is that this type of conversation, I think we have to have acknowledging that we're talking about it from a place of privilege because the clients who are seeking coaching or who are in organizations that are sponsoring coaching um, are typically people who are at a place of choice, right? There's um, an element of financial security and then some flexibility in how we take up our work. So the issues that tend to come up is... And, and I think, uh, to your point, they have choice. They may not exactly. realize they have choice. That's and they right. may not feel like they have choice, but they, yes. but they do have choice. Yes, You're there's right. sort of the sociological dimension of... We're talking about people who are pri financially privileged and fairly secure. Although, to your point, in the moment, you know, we may be living a lifestyle that requires something that the work provides that um, leaves us in a place where we feel like we're not necessarily coming from a place of choice. But in general, the, converse, the conversations and the way that it comes up is from this, am I doing it right? Am I, am I a good enough parent? Am I the parent I want to be? Am I good enough mm. you know, professional? Am I doing the work that I'm expected to do? Um, where the trade-offs need to happen and what the right trade-offs are and, um, and are the trade-offs I'm making ones that I can live with and be satisfied with long-term. So I think there's sort of the big, almost existential questions about the role of work yeah. and, um, and, the, and the role of parenting and you know, not to mention marriage and relationships. 